So we're gonna pop this in the, oh. oh. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen where dreams become food. I came up with a saying the other day, hold on, wait for it. Food brings people together. I made that up just by myself. Uh, no, Nicole and I have actually talked about it in the podcast. I don't know if it's true. Now, why get depressing on it? Why get depressing? But I really do believe that food brings people together and you know how I know that? It's because people all have the same wants and needs. No matter what race, religion, credo, sexuality, we all just want to slurp on some slippery nudes. Is that so much to ask for? People around the world, slippery nudes exist and they're slurping them down and I think that's beautiful. That's why we are making spaghetti from not to not four, but three different continents today. And if you wanna snag the recipes for that, we got the time codes right there. You can also get the full written version down in the description. Let's get to slurping those slippery nudes. So we're starting with one of the coolest spaghetti dishes in the entire world for my money. It's called Napoli-tan. It comes from Yokohama, Japan. I'm gonna get some spaghetti cooking and then we'll talk. Give me a second. You're always like, Josh, <laughs> give me a sec. Oh, salt, salt, salt. Salt your pasta water. You want to make it salty like the sea. Not true, we tested that. Watch Myth Muncher's pasta edition. Anyways, <laughs> salt your pasta water. Put your spaghetti in. We're gonna start getting some onions and bell peppers sweated down right here and then whoop, one straggler. And then you always got one straggler and then it gets caught in your zipper. And then we're gonna go ahead and add. <laughs> All right, so we got onions, we got bell pepper, we got mushroom, and then we have our Japanese sausages made from Berkshire pork, AKA Korobuta. Uh, this dish is really fascinating because Napolitan, literally like the translation in Italian would be like Napolitana, meaning of or relating to Naples. But in the Japanese kanji, there's no differentiation between the L and the R. And so this gets transliterated into English characters as Napolitan. It's a really popular street food. It was invented by Shigetada Irie, 1945 at the Hotel New Grand. They say that Douglas MacArthur, newly named Supreme Allied Commander for the entire Pacific Theater, headquartered there for three days. Chef Shigetada Irie made this for him. It was reminiscent of the American army rations that had spaghetti with tomato ketchup in it. And that's how ketchup became a signature. However, Shigetada Irie, of course, was trained under a Swiss chef who had Italian background. He never used ketchup in the original dish. Did you catch that? I don't think I breathed during the entire explanation. I'll put some onions in there. It's a really cool dish though. So this is one of those things that like, you know, a lot of people when they think of Japanese food, you know, you think ramen, you think sushi, uh, you think tempura, things that there's a lot of sort of craft in. And not to say there's not a lot of craft in this dish, but to me, this is like an awesome street food dish. It's comfort food. Like literally the spaghetti in Napolitan in Japan is typically what some may call overcooked because it's meant to resemble like the softness of an udon noodle, which I think is really cool, especially as someone with soft teeth who like, I don't like al dente pasta. To me, I don't need it. Let the pasta be soft and make love to my palate. I'm gonna slice up some sausages. Uh, sausages, these are Japanese sausages, but I mean, honestly, you could use hot dogs in this dish as well. There's like a huge influx of uh, processed meats in Japan after World War II. Dig, dig, get it up! Oh, but then of course the history of the dish is actually really debated. People are like, yo, that dude lied about actually creating the dish. And they say they didn't actually use ketchup in like the original dish and it was uh, tomato paste and canned tomato, except that was like expensive in Japan at the time, whereas ketchup is just like a ton of preservatives and sugar. Every food myth is exactly that, right? Like I wanna know the one true food history of anything. Like Caesar salad, whole family split up over who actually created that. It's tearing people apart, dude, what? Most Italian pastas, right? You would fully make the sauce, you would cook the pasta, and then you would drop the pasta and finish it in the sauce. Whereas if you look at a lot of like stir fried noodle dishes uh, from China to Korea to Thailand to Japan, you would like add the noodles and then put the sauce directly into that and stir fry it almost dry. So that's what we're gonna try and do with this dish. Keep it really heavy on that heat. I'm gonna get this. It's, it's like salmon fishing in the Yemen. Now you and McGregor, good, good film. All right, we're about 25 minutes away on that spaghetti. I'm gonna keep sauteing this up. Check back in a sec. The noodles are like a little bit past al dente, which is what I want. I'm gonna try and like pick up some of that fond off the bottom of the pan with a little bit of that pasta water, and that's gonna add a little bit of starch to tighten everything up. Again, we're gonna try and stir fry this to like almost dry. And then I'm gonna take my nudes out of there. I wish I could just, ah, oh God, I wish I could just grab them all with my hands. That's what I want. That's the dream. Can we amputate my hands and just put on like wooden ones so I can really touch all the hot things I want to? All right, so we're adding our spaghetti to that. 
and we got a little bit of that water in there. That's gonna help disperse the ketchup. So we're adding in the ketchup. And again, the original recipe wasn't made with ketchup, but like this is now the popular sort of street food version because ketchup was super, super accessible. Uh, and it didn't have like the stigma of being like a cheap condiment, right? Like in America, you get people like, ketchup doesn't belong on hot dogs, it's cheap, it's for kids. There's no reason that it should be viewed that way. And I think it's one of the reasons I love an international dish like this is that it, a little bit of soy sauce too. You take like something like ketchup that we take for granted. And to me, it's like a really beautiful, complex sauce. One, it has thousands of years of history dating back to like an ancient Chinese fermented fish sauce. Uh, but you know, it, it's just like a really delectable thing. It's uh, spiced, it's sweet. Uh, it's got a lot of acid to it. I think it's really complex and delicious. Butter, tossing in butter. Also, this is, y'all know Honey Boo Boo? Now it's kind of getting into Honey Boo Boo recipe territory where she has a thing called sketty that's equal parts ketchup and butter that's microwaved and then put on spaghetti. And it's pretty good. I respect some people look up to like the Jacques Pepins and the Gordon Ramsay's of the world. I look up to Honey Boo Boo. All right, we are almost there. Let that butter melt. Hey, speaking of spaghetti, Nicole and I have a podcast called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. The latest episode is out now wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, it's like the cooking show, except without the cooking. More just me and Nicole talking for 45 minutes. So if that interests you, if you're watching this and be like, man, I would sure love it if there wasn't a pan of food in front of that guy. And also, there, instead there was a co-host named Nicole talking. Then the podcast might be for you. All right, this is getting there. You see the texture on that spaghetti? It's like some of the starch of the spaghetti is actually starting to like really thicken up all that ketchup. And so we're just gonna... Sorry, sorry. There we go. And so um, here's the expert spaghetti plating technique. I don't know what I thought was gonna happen. I don't know. I'm gonna take some Parmesan cheese, nuzzle that over the top. That was a bad job on dispersing that. And then finish it with a little black pepper. There you have it. Spaghetti Napolitan out of Japan. Yokohama style. Can't wait to dig in. This smells all kind of delicious. Can't wait to dig in. I'm eating it with chopsticks because one, I eat all noodle dishes with chopsticks, including just Italian spaghetti because it's a much superior eating vessel for noodles. Kind of hold it steaming. We can do it. That's a hell of a dish. The texture of the spaghetti from kind of stir frying it and cooking it almost reminds you of something like a pad thai or like a yakisoba because you're cooking the sauce into the noodles until it's almost dry. So it infuses everything. The sausage is a, is a freaking delight. Somewhere in between like a hot dog and a Denny's breakfast sausage, which was really good. This is one of my favorite new spaghetti dishes. I'm gonna start making this a lot more at home, but hey. We got two more for you. Hola, mi amigos. Let me take you to the beautiful region of Mexico where you can find Espagetti Verde. Now, if you pass Spanish one in high school, you basically can figure it out that that means green spaghetti. And what makes this green spaghetti so green? This bad boy right here, the poblano pepper. So we're gonna go ahead and just start making our sauce for this spaghetti. I'm gonna turn on this thing and act like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. And then, oh, it went off. Hold on, it's on. Okay, so basically the poblano pepper, right? We're gonna go ahead and roast these. Ah, I burned my finger just a little bit, but <laughs> it's okay because why? I have hot girl fingers. So this is actually, this reminds me so much of how my mom used to roast peppers because she would do it on an open flame just like this. And my grandma would too, but like the tip of her fingers were like really wrinkly and I knew it wasn't cause she was old. I knew it was because she was flipping chilies on the stove. So while these are burning over here, let me tell you some nice beautiful history about this dish. So like the 16th century, a whole bunch of Spaniards were coming to Mexico, right? They wanted to migrate and take over all the land just like everybody else in Europe. So the Italians saw that happening and they were like, oh man, we should go over there too. But let's bring pasta. So uh, actually this originated in Puebla, Mexico. And does anybody know, does anybody know what they call citizens that live in Puebla? Anyway, anyway, Josh? Wait, yeah, but you tell me. Yeah, they're called Poblanos. I knew that. Why? Cause they're hot. All right, so now that we got these nice and crispy, we have our good little Ziploc baggie right here. And they're basically gonna just sweat out in this bag so that we can peel them later. And it's like a little, you know, second mini sauna. 
They're just gonna sweat. Get all their toxins out. Let me turn this off so I don't die. So we got our beautiful chilies that have been sweated and we're gonna go ahead and peel these. But I need some gloves cause to be fair, like my, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe not. They're not even that hot. I was being soft. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Mom, I know you taught me better. I'm so sorry. Um, so this is, to be fair, like, I hate peeling peppers because my mom used to make me do it when she used to make chili de llenos, right? Like, everybody, if you have kids, this is the best part if you have kids, right? You make them do all the dirty work. All right, this is kind of hot. So I'm going to get one glove. <laughs> make sure your gloves are ready, you know, because <laughs> no glove, no love. So we're gonna go ahead and just take all these seeds out and just take this nice little top off. So I'm gonna just kinda just rip it apart. And it's okay if it looks a little bit ugly cause it's gonna get blended anyway. Like who cares, right? So yeah, we're just gonna go throw that in there. I left some seeds. Don't make no comments about it underneath because I'm a hypocrite, it's fine. We have some milk that we're gonna pour in there. A nice ugh, big old piece of onion. That might be a lot of onion, but you know, who cares, right? Some nice chicken bouillon, or I like to call love salt, and some regular salt. Ignore the cream cheese, it doesn't go in there yet. Where's the orange? Oh yeah, and it's gonna make a nice, beautiful green color. All right, so we have this nice, beautiful color. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? It's not pesto though. It smells good. All right, we have our pan over here, so we're gonna go ahead and just pour this. Is it hot? It's not hot. Ooh, look at that beautiful green sauce, y'all. I'm so excited. All right, so we're gonna get this nice slab. I'm just gonna put half in there because I'm lactose intolerant, but there is a vegan way to do this, guys. I'm gonna figure it out eventually. And then we're gonna just let this cream, you know what, I might have to throw more in there. I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and let all this cream cheese melt in there, and then we're gonna throw in our spaghetti and then it's gonna be a nice, rich, creamy, and very vibrant sauce. And it's gonna be so beautiful. Get your lactate ready. Oh wait, I do have my lactate ready. It's not in that pocket. Hold on. Hey, not a sponsor, but should be. Lactate, call me. <laughs> we got our beautiful spaghetti. We're gonna toss it in this sauce. To be fair, I like more sauce than noodles. I'm not a huge like, oh my God, let's put all the noodles in there. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that spoon either. See, now it just looks like they're taking a bath. It, now I need more noodles. I lied. And uh, people like to do that little spaghetti trick with the spoon and make it look pretty. Like, who cares, bro? Like, it's gonna get on your face anyway. So I'm just gonna do one of these. Yeah. Good spaghetti. That's nice. That's real nice. All right, we have some queso fresco over here that I'm kind of just gonna just sprinkle on top. And then we have our beautiful cilantro and we're just gonna add little baby bits of it. And voila la 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 la. That's spaghetti, verde. Guys, honestly, me and my whole Mexican side of the family would be very proud to see the spaghetti on a plate and I might have to make it for them later. But right now we're gonna go ahead and try it. Mm. Like, that's, whoa. That's like next level spaghetti. This is so, so good. The sauce is so creamy and so rich and it's just, it hits, it hits right here, right in the heart and I'm so happy. All right, I'm gonna go enjoy this. You guys enjoy some more spaghetti. Hello everyone, I'm Trevor Everts, your professional chef helper today. And I am making tallarines a la huancaina. Uh, but before we get into that, Danny Palumbo, a guy with a great mustache and a trusting face, he, he's got a face you can trust. Uh, he's a writer at Sporked and he wrote an amazing article on grocery store spaghetti and pasta and what are the best brands? What's got the best snap? What's got the best texture? I don't know, he probably wrote all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you're ever wondering what to buy, go check out sport.com because they help you navigate the grocery store. It's great. Anyway, back to Tayarines a la Huancaina. Uh, so this is from Peru, uh, the Huancayo region of Peru, obviously. Um, and it is made with aji amarillo. Uh, it's very yellow. It's hard to find uh, aji amarillo peppers in the United States of A sometimes. So I've got the paste, um, but it's your traditional Peruvian dish. It's actually traditionally papa a la Huancaina, 
uh, which is potatoes and huancaina sauce. Um, but I'm gonna start taking this red onion. We're gonna get a quick dice on it. Everything's gonna be blended, so you don't really have to worry about doing too fine of a dice, even though I don't want to ashamed myself in front of my chef peers, so I'm gonna do my very best to get a good dice on it. Huancaina, it's very cool. Uh, it's like a cheesy, creamy, spicy sauce. Uh, it's really delicious, but it actually was made in Peru when they were building the Trans-Andean Railway. Even though this probably isn't true because like most food origin stories don't mean anything. Like realistically, it was probably someone in their house, they had some ingredients and they're like, oh, I'm gonna make something yummy and they just made it. But food origin stories are fun. Like nobody knows when the croissant was invented. It was probably just some dude like some baker and he's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna make something new. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna pop this butter in the pan. Hopefully it's hot. Ah, rats. <laughs> so the Trans-Andean Railway, there was a railway being built to traverse the Andes Mountains, which are in South America. Uh, but the railway was being built between Lima and Huancayo. And the story goes that a Huancaina, which is a woman from Huancayo, uh, was trying to sell some food to the railway workers. And uh, she made this great sauce out of ají amarillo. It's used in all sorts of Peruvian cooking, just like as a dish, as a... Fun fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I could sound really stupid in a second. Salsa is just Spanish for sauce. That's correct, Trevor. Yeah, so anytime like salsa huancaina is just huancaina sauce. So, a little fun fact for you. I took three years of Spanish in high school and it is like really depressing how little I know. Um, but I do my best. I do my very best, you know, sometimes. Butter's still not melted to be clear. I know we do this bit a lot and it's not really a bit, but we really should get some new We're pans. We're working on it. We got, <laughs> we, we got into we, the pack bed. We... <laughs> you no know new pans we're gonna buy. We had to get a glass electric cooktop. I... <laughs> All right? Perfect I, fire marshal's been on our A-double hockey sticks. Josh is, Josh is yelling over my cooking beats. But anyway, I'm gonna take these onions. I'm gonna get those going in there, get those sweating. Um, we're just gonna let the sauce kind of sweat out. The onions, the aromatics, we're gonna get a little bit of minced garlic going in there as well. And then this ají amarillo paste. And we really just want the garlic and the onions to kind of sweat out, release some of that flavor. And then it's all gonna get blended with these other ingredients, which I will explain momentarily. But for now, I'm going to grab a spoon. Oh yeah, this is so, yellow and beautiful. It's such a beautiful color. I wish we could get fresh ají amarillo peppers. Sadly, we cannot. This kind of just looks like baby food, but if you fed this to a baby, that would not be good because it is very spicy. Woo! Woo! Ooh! So what's your guy's favorite pasta noodle? My favorite's rigatoni rigatti for reasons with which you can find on the podcast a hot dog is a sandwich. And my favorite is pappardelle. Trevor, do you know where you can find the reasons? I bet it's on a hot dog as a sandwich. No, Out every Wednesday, <laughs> wherever you get your podcast. Josh says journal, like he doesn't just come stand right where I'm standing and just spill any thought he's ever had. <laughs> Out for anyone to hear or listen to. All right, so we're gonna pop this in the, oh. oh. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this here can of evaporated milk. I really bungled that one, didn't I? You're never gonna let me cook again. What the heck? Oh, and the lid's in there. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? Uh, if I remember the recipe correctly, it is a half a cup of evaporated milk. So I'm gonna take this here blender, I'm gonna put it back on, and I'm gonna pour one half of a cup. And then that is gonna get cleaned up, probably by me, uh, once I decide to clean it up and that this bit is over. Bit I say as if I'm not actually cooking. So I'm gonna put all of that garlic and onions and ají amarillo paste in the blender. Um, and then the cheese going in there is queso fresco, uh, which is a great, really delicious cheese. Uh, I think V used it in her, I say I think as if it didn't just happen. Yes, V used queso fresco in her recipe as well. It's a great cheese. You should just start buying queso fresco and like putting it on things. I'm gonna pop this bit of queso fresco in there and then saltine crackers or soda crackers are gonna go in there and they're just gonna act as kind of a thickening and a binding agent for the sauce. So I'm gonna pop these crackers in. Start slow. I'm not like Josh. I don't like to just turn it to high right away. It scares me. Hi. So yellow. Amarillo is yellow. Who's laughing at me? It was a sneeze? You're all sneezing, you're paranoid, you're losing it. I am, it's cause I spilled the milk, dude. Hold it together. No, I can't, bless you. 
Wow, I'm back and it's almost like nothing tragic ever happened regarding evaporated milk. Uh, but this sauce is looking really beautiful. It's liquidy, it's gold, it's amazing. Uh, and I'm just gonna take this here sketty. It could have done it with my hand, but I like the tiny tongs. I'm gonna do what Josh does into the sink. Oh, <laughs> I can't do anything right. That's a nice sound. Let me get that. Yeah, That's good stuff. Getting that. <laughs> Uh, then, what, traditionally, you want to put it on the plate. Uh, and then, just some shaved Parmesan, just to go right on top there, just to give it a nice little oomph, a little razzle-dazzle, if you will. And then, uh, some nice chopped parsley, you know? Give it a little pop of color. Hold on, hold on. Nice. The moment of truth. To see if I've made the people of the Huancayo region proud and the greater Peru area. <gasps> Oh. Oop, it hit me. It's really spicy, but it's crazy because the flavor doesn't feel like a normal, like usually when you get something that's really spicy, it has a really aggressive flavor, but the flavor of the Ajo Mario is so light. It's almost like a refreshing flavor and the spice isn't punching me in the face. It's kind of coating the back of my tongue. It's coating the back of my mouth and it's not lingering. It's just a really delicious pasta. It's very refreshing. It's like a nice little treat and I get, oh, Oh, friends are here. Oh, give me some nudes. Come on I in, friends. Wait, that's a lot. Hold on. No, you got I got eat. a lot too. Hold what the hell on. are you guys eating with? Josh, can you stop being an elitist I I for two seconds? I think I got my face. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite of all the pasta that we made today. It's really good. <laughs> Woo! Well, what did we learn today? That you can grow chest hair when spaghetti's too hot. Spaghetti good. Yeah, both of those things are true. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. No, we got new recipes out for you every week. Uh, check out our podcast, Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram and TikTok, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. Just like Kate did. Kate's from Idaho. That's also where Trevor's from. And what did, tell people what Kate made, Trevor. I don't... Yeah, I don't I know mean, that one, do you? I'm crying. No, but hi. Shout out Idaho. All my Idaho. I can hear the Chester growing up yet. Uh, uh, Kate made animal style mac and cheese. Kate, your animal style mac and cheese looks absolutely delicious. She said she's gonna make it in the future. That's very exciting. Woo! Be like Kate. See y'all next time. This is hot fire flames. This is just this like Dylon. Delicious. <laughs> hot takes make for hot t-shirts, make for hot boy summers. Check out our hot dogs and sandwich tea available now at mythical.com.